everyone, we're Irene, and we're going to read the A Book of Tr Pepper Day. Chapter Six. Why is me? Have you seen Tutor? Mrs. Pepperday stood in an office doorway the next morning. Mr. Pepperday went on writing at his computer. She said it louder. Have you seen Tutor? Mr. Pepperday kept writing. Mrs. Pepperday came into the room. She stood behind Mr. Pepperday and rapped the top of his head with her knuckle. Mr. Pepperday swagged. Ow! Next time I sit on your keyboard, said Mrs. Pepperday. Have you seen Tutor? Mr. Pepperday rubbed his head. No. Why? The morning's half over and I haven't seen her yet. She's not in her room. Do you know where she is? No, but I know where she was. Into my computer again. He scrolled off the screen. This is her lastest. Mrs. Pepperdy leaned over his shoulder to read the words on the screen. Every minute, Tutor Pepperdy made a new green sum discovery above the farm. Every day she listened for the bell of the Jack and Jill ice cream truck, but it never came. There were no movies, no video accord, no delay, no 7-Eleven. The TV only had two channels and no cable. And worst of all, nobody would deliver. Tutor Pepper Day was a kid without pizza. Tutor Pepper Day cried out loud. Woe is me! Do you think she took off down the road again? said Mr. Pepper Day. I don't know, said Mrs. Pepper Day, but I'm going to find out. She went back downstairs, calling Tutor's name. She called again and again. From the front door, from the back door. Chucky came running it with Harvey. Have you seen your sister? said Mrs. Pepperdine. No, said Chucky. Oof, said Harvey. She's not your sister, said Mrs. Pepperdine to Harvey. Did she run away? said Chucky. Mrs. Pepperdine held his chin. Why do you say that? Because she said she was going to go back home, even if she had to walk. Mrs. Pepperdine rolled her eye to the sky. Help me, she ran to the car. Chucky and Harvey hurried after. Can we come? said Chucky. All right, all right. Climb in. Quick! Chucky and Harvey jumped into the back seat. Mrs. Pepperdine drew down the road. Keep a sharp eye out, you two, she said. Oof, said Harvey. Eight miles she drove, nine miles, ten miles. No tutor. She turned around and drove twenty miles the other way. Still no tutor. She drove back to the farmhouse. Are we going to call the police, ma'am? said Chucky. First, I'm calling Mr. Tollin, she said. Maybe he knows something. Chucky and Harvey raced into the kitchen. Mrs. Pepperdine followed. She telephoned a neighbor, Mr. Tollin. He was out in the fields. But Mrs. Tollin said she had not seen a little girl. Mrs. Pepperdine went up to her husband's office. I can't find her anywhere. This time, Mr. Pepperdine heard the first time. He turned in his chair. They stared at each other, afraid to speak, afraid to even think what might have happened to Tutor. Suddenly, Mrs. Pepperdy cocked her head. What's that noise? What noise? said Mr. Pepperdy. Dad, she moved to the doorway, thumping. She was heading down the hall, following the sound to Tutor's room. Most of Harvey was under Tutor's bed. Only his shaggy. Rusty tail shook out. It was dumping on the floor like a drummer. Harvey, commanded Mr. Pepperdine. Harvey backed out and came to Mrs. Pepperdine, wagging his tail. Two, three, she said, I'll count to three. One, two. On the count of three, Tutor clawed out from the under her bed. Thank you.